Uh, my name is Jeff Raymond. I'm going to be kicking it off today. I'm going to be joined by, as you can tell, uh, a cast of characters as we take you through uh, an update. We're going to talk about software today. And we're going to talk about our software in the context of our broader enterprise solution. Uh, I would probably venture a guess that when you think of Arista, you think of a data center switching company. That's pretty much where we started, what we're known for, where the bulk of our market is. We're going to talk about how we're expanding that into the broader enterprise. And in particular, some of the enterprise campus use cases, the uh, enterprise security use cases, but we won't forget data center. Data center is there as well today. So that's what we mean when we talk about multi-domain, is the various networking domains uh, of the enterprise and how we're really bringing these together from, a, from our software approach. So we have, a, a, I would say, a packed agenda. I think everyone always says that. We, when you have two hours, you, you squeeze in what you can. We definitely wanted to make this interactive as, as it's, this, uh, this setup is meant to be. We still have a lot to get through, so we'll work through Q&A as, as they come up. I'm going to start off with the easy part and then get out of the way, basically bringing up the speed on what's going on at Arista and what we've been up to. Then we're going to have a session on Cloud Vision, which is our management plane product. Uh, and we'll have Andre, Paul, and Profil take us through that with kind of an overview of where the product uh, is from, from a general perspective, and then some key demos of some of our newer features. Uh, and then the second part, we're going to focus on security, segmentation, and our approach that we call MSS, or multi-domain segmentation services. That's going to be led by Alessandro. Okay. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with what's new. And uh, as Tom knows, uh, we always like to bring people up to speed uh, from an ERISA perspective from our history at the Tech Field Day platform. Uh, and it just so happens that we actually were at the very first networking field day back in 2010. Uh, so that was, uh, you know, very early days for ERISA. And we participated, this is our 19th uh, Tech Field Day. I don't pretend that we're the winners. I'm sure other vendors have been to more. But, you know, talking about a longevity here of 14, almost 15 years there. And in the last several, uh, seeing here, we've done, obviously, the networking field days. We've done mobility field days with our Wi-Fi solution. We recently did the AI field day where we talked about the role networking plays in AI, uh, AI compute network uh, clusters. And then here we are today at networking field day 36 uh, with the agenda that we talked about there today. Uh, probably also worth noting, Arista just celebrated its 20th anniversary, uh, and we're kind of probably still, at least in the networking world, we're still a newer vendor. There's obviously vendors out there that have been there a lot longer than us. Uh, but 20 years ago, literally uh, last month, is when Ken Duda founded the company as employee number one. And, and obviously, as Tom mentioned, uh, Ken is still uh, kind of the heart and soul of the engineering organization today, driving our software approach. Uh, and he's been at many of these events, not here today. But, but here, uh, here in spirit. So let's catch you up on what we've been up to this calendar year from an ERISA perspective. There's a couple of different announcements we made this year, and some of them are actually going to be highlighted in today's session. First of all, we've expanded uh, our telemetry solution to what we call 360-degree observability with a new capability within the Cloud Vision product we call Cloud Vision Uno. And UNO stands for Universal Network Observability. And Profil is going to show you a demo of this today. It's basically how we take that network data and marry it with broader data sets, including application data, third-party data, to provide better insights, better visibility into the general operations. We've also introduced uh, our latest generation of security solutions with, with what I talked about, the multi-domain segmentation. And Alessandro is going to bring that up as an example of some of the latest capabilities we have there. We introduced a whole new portfolio of products that are focused on that AI cluster backend networking infrastructure. We call it the Etherlink AI portfolio. That was back in the June timeframe. And then in Q3, we, we, we actually talked about what we're going to talk about today, which is how we're bringing our operational model, that, can, that software first operational model, uh, across those networking domains to, uh, to the broader enterprise. So what do we mean when we talk about multi-domain, let me just set up, set up the problem statement. I'll do it the old fashioned way. No, we're not, we're not getting anything here either. Oh, there we go. All right, so when we talk about the challenge with an enterprise and we think of 
not just the data center, not just the campus, not just the backbone or the WAN. We're talking about historically disparate parts of, of networking architectures. We're talking about either technologies that existed uh, or protocols that existed uniquely in these different parts of the architectures and associated operational models that followed those. If you think about the WAN, it used to be, you might think of like a frame relay type WAN architecture. If you think about the campus, you might think of, oh, I need to support IPX and Apple Talk. If you think about the data center, you might have been thinking about, well, my storage is fiber channel, but my, my compute is ethernet. And so historically, all of the different network art domains had very specific solutions, right? And so what does the enterprise operator need to do with that? They're looking at this and saying, well, I need a team working on that protocol and that technology. I needed to operationalize this way. I do software upgrades over here that way. I troubleshoot here this way. It's a very complex world that was created historically because of that multi-protocol environment. Now, if you think where we are today and how we can build for that today, a lot of that has consolidated down on ethernet and IP. Even you can say, you know, the WAN can be a lot of Ethernet and IP, especially IP. Uh, the storage networks can be that way too. And so there's a consolidation. And so why do we need to live with all of that overhead, operational baggage, architectural baggage, when we can actually start to normalize and, and, and basically bring in a, an abstraction to all those networks with a similar operational model? Because fundamentally, these are different domains of the network, but when you're an end user, you're actually thinking and operating across that entire network. Your client sitting in the campus is accessing your storage and your data center or in the cloud. And, and as a network engineer, you want to be able to see that end-to-end -end connection for that end-to-end -end experience. And so when we think about how the enterprise can be simplified operationally, what benefit can we provide? We're thinking about how do we take these silos and, and boil them down into a consistent operational model. And that's where uh, our approach comes in, which you're gonna hear about these products as we go through the various sections. Whether it's, uh, obviously we started in the data center and that's where our core value comes from, our software first approach with EOS, which is our operating system. That's where it was born, we built it from the ground up and that's, you know, even when Ken started 20 years ago, that's what he was working on. Um, and as we've expanded to these domains, We've expanded EOS. So when we moved into the campus, we added you know, PoE and other capabilities from, to our switching portfolio into, based on that same EOS stack. When we moved into WAN, we built the routing stack from scratch so that we support a, a broad number of routing protocols and platforms. Even public cloud, bringing our virtualized EOS into those instances. And, and so as we've done this, we basically brought that software first approach across there where you don't have to reinvent the wheel as you move from domain to domain. Your operational model can be retained. Certainly we had to do development to get there, but we didn't have to build a parallel set of solutions like, we had, like the industry had historically had to deal with. And so as we expand that, one of the things you'll hear from Andre is the idea of our state-based architecture and how we have a very focus, significant focus architecturally on how we manage the state of a device. When we bring all that state back to a centralized repository, that's where really the magic happens from an operations perspective. We call that the network data lake or NetDL. And as we collect data from these various parts of the enterprise, you can imagine that you get a broader data set on which to, uh, to, to use for automation, for analytics and that sort of thing. And then it's on that network data lake, which is really just a backend concept that we have applications. And Cloud Vision is the primary application from a network management perspective. And you'll see that product uh, in the demos today. And so that's kind of our approach here. It's very, very consistent. We're trying to say the design principles, the operational models, the troubleshooting, even the way you do software patching or P-cert remediation doesn't have to be different. You can actually follow a similar protocol and an operational model. Yep, yeah, yeah. question. Please. Scott Robon, um, so as you move into the enterprise, you will run into other installed vendors. Some customers are nervous about using a single vendor's management system, especially when there's multi-vendor to manage. I don't want to get ahead of you. If, you're gonna, if, if you'll talk about it later, that's fine, but I'd love to hear you speak to that. Yeah, sure. And so the, you know, the question is, you know, first of all, EOS is our own operating system and Cloud Vision manages EOS instances. So that implies that it, it's specific to Arista. Uh, we actually have the fortunate position of never being the incumbent in any of these environments. 
<laughs> I, you know, I kind of joke we're strategically, you know, last to show up to all these markets, but we have the benefit of building from the ground up and doing it kind of methodically and consistently. So a lot of other vendors would do a lot of acquisitions and stitch together their portfolio that way. We've intentionally not done that, but at the same time, it means we are by default always in a multi-vendor environment. And so we have had, and one of the biggest ways we've solved that is through integrations with third-party systems, like an Ansible, for example, is a, a very common one. Uh, we've been able to leverage Cloud Vision as that point of abstraction of the Arista state into those third-party <laughs> systems so that it is easier to actually integrate into those dual vendor environments. So we can get into some more examples later, but that's fundamentally the world we've always lived in, whether it's data center and it actually doesn't change when we think about the broader enterprise. Is there another question? Yeah, Scott actually asked the question I had queued up, Ron Westfall. So I'm gonna ask another one naturally, and that is you know, linking the Arista proposition to improved business outcomes. Yeah. I imagine it's built in, and I guess you know, any anecdotes, any, you know, data like, okay, they adopted Arista, therefore it meant, you know, these outcomes were uh, the, uh, the product. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I think if you look at this and you say, all right, what do I do that's the same across these different networking domains? Even if you say, well, I use Arista in two of the four or three of the four, take, take something like software upgrades. Everyone needs to upgrade their network at some point. How many different ways do you have to do that? Right? And I think we get into the point of software upgrades have become this world where um, customers are afraid to touch the network because it either is brittle or the software upgrade is too complex. Well, if you can actually have a, a proven way to do that and be able to minimize the operational impact through hitless upgrades, you, don't, you can actually keep the software trains moving forward, take advantage of the latest technology, and move your business forward from that perspective without having to reinvent the wheel every single time. That's one example. There's a lot of other operational examples it takes when you think about the benefit of a multi-domain approach. Makes and, sense. And I have a question too, just at a, at a high level on this whole uh, management solution side and, and the multi-vendor. Because um, you know, I've never worked in any network that's, that's, a, <laughs> that's a single vendor. Sure. And uh, what's your philosophy in terms of uh, API um, control of the Arista side of the system so that it's the higher level system that has to talk to all the vendors and implement uh, the end-to-end -end path because you're, in that case, going to be only one piece of the end-to-end -end path. Absolutely. I mean, it goes back to the question over here is that, you know, we need to, cl Cloud Vision is uh, the, uh, the preferred management system for the Arista estate, but it very much is entire can be API driven. We will see in Paul's demo later, we have actually built Cloud Vision to be that software own, you know, the, the interface that's only for the software engineer if you need it that way. Then on the other hand, there's customers that are interested in more directional GUI driven workflows, right? And so we need to support it from a broader aperture perspective so that all the functions that you can do in Cloud Vision can be driven through those APIs if okay. that's the path you choose. Yeah, that's what I was get, getting at primarily. Is there anything that is not in the API? Is it an API first? API as first. The, as the GUI the, is totally yeah, driven okay. through API first. Okay. And, and by the way, if you choose, not, Cloud Vision is an optional product. Many of our largest customers are doing, building their own network automation solutions. And oh, in yeah? that case, they're actually talking directly to EOS we have some of our biggest customers are the large cloud operators, and we're not focusing on that use case today, but we're building one infrastructure, whether you're the largest cloud or you're using the, you know, the simplest cloud vision workflow that you have. Okay. Another question, if I could, um, Bob and Cal. Um, so for, I think most of Arista's history, your story has been based around you know, common uh, operating platform, right, with, with EOS um, and you know, sort of a, a you know, a small uh, elite support staff, right? So you're always, you know, getting top tier support. And a lot of that advantage comes from the fact that you guys kind of started from zero and you didn't have a lot of acquisition baggage and, and years of, you know, that sort of thing. Now, you know, over the past few years, you've, you acquired a big switch, I think, for your visibility fabric. You acquired Mojo for your wireless. You're expanding into other, uh, you know, areas within, within the enterprise. As you scale, as you grow through product acquisitions, can you talk a little bit about your commitment to kind of maintaining that vision that's always been Arista's kind of, you know, defining differentiator versus some of the, yeah. the other vendors? I, I would, thank you. I wish I, 
I didn't even ask you to ask that question, but it's. <laughs> I promise that was not meant to be a softball. <laughs> um, you know, uh, it is. It is the most fundamental in our company. And when I talked about Ken starting the company and the fact that he's still leading uh, the software development, it is very much built on this software first mentality. And how do we maintain, you know, the, the high quality through automation, through testing, through a single code base, through a you know non bifurcated, you know, release train model. Um, and, and all those acquisitions you talk about, we've brought them in to the Arista software stack. Big Switch, they run EOS. Uh, when I, we don't call it Big Switch anymore, but the products that came in through Big Switch, they're running EOS. Same with Metamaco on the low latency side, all those products that are running EOS. The Wi-Fi products are built into Cloud Vision from the management plane perspective. Um, and so very much, we wanted to, to leverage, this is our go to market. The, the, the story you just told is what customers appreciate about Arista and we need to continue to align to that. Now, if there's something that's very kind of adjacent, um, then we will keep it somewhat separate. Like for example, our NDR acquisition of Awake, that product sits as a standalone product, but we brought the Awake sensor functionality into EOS. That way we can get traffic directly out of the switches. Cloud Vision is a lot of things. Uh, we're not going to cover it all today, uh, but we're going to cover some of the key new ones. But I wanted you to at least have this context. Day zero, day one, day two. Andre will talk about kind of where we've come from in terms of Cloud Vision. It's a SaaS offering that we run from our SRE perspective. It's also available on-prem. Uh, and it's, it's really what we call multi-function. And then it's also multi-domain. So multi, many different multis. Today, we're going to focus on data center, campus, and security. Uh, WAN is another area we've built out into our portfolio. It's, it's, it's too big. We didn't have time on the agenda to squeeze that in. So we self-selected that for a future one. Um, we could also talk about all the great networking services that Cloud Vision has as well. But we're going to focus on uh, these three areas here today that I've highlighted in orange um, and so that we can get right to it. 